F1H to a World Powerboat Championship kicked into high gear as the tour headed to the United Arab Emirates for the final two rounds of the 2017 season, with Abu Dhabi hosting the fifth and penultimate Grand Prix of the year. capital of the UAE, Abu Dhabi is a thriving, cosmopolitan, oil-rich, international jet-set destination, a name synonymous with luxury, style, elegance and avant-garde technology. This world-renowned financial, cultural and tourism destination boasts some of the most impressive infrastructure and architecture anywhere on Earth. The iconic Abu Dhabi skyline is a breathtaking sight to behold and forms a wonderful scenic backdrop to the golden, sun-kissed sandy beaches along its shores. Abu Dhabi is also on the international art map with its many museums, foremost of which is the magnificent Louvre Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is an emirate rooted in a long and illustrious Arabian and Islamic history where the locals take deep pride in their culture and traditions while keeping their gaze ever onward and upward into the future as the city continues to grow and progress at breakneck pace. It's no wonder that a city known for technology would host the UIM F1H2O Grand Prix for the past three decades. Locals flocked to the event venue where they got to get a closer look at these incredible machines, mingle in the VIP area, and even get to take a ride in the H2O two-seater for a first-hand experience of the hair-raising thrill of F1 H2O racing. Abu Dhabi welcomed the UIM F1 H2O tour back with a lavish gala dinner where teams, drivers, crew and their families got to unwind, relax and taste the splendors of local and Middle Eastern cuisine. But first, let's take a quick look back at what happened at the last round in China. Round four in the Grand Prix of Liuzhou, drivers had to contend with grueling tropical heat that made the 48 lap race a true test of stamina, concentration and skill. Alex Carrella took the BRM qualifying pole position and held off all challengers at the start of the race, given close pursuit by Eric Stark in second position and Ahmed Alhamali in third. Carella opened a good lead, but his work was undone on lap 14 when a drifting buoy caused a yellow flag. Carella held off the Stark challenge at the restart, but Al Hamily was quickly passed by Philip Schiap, who replaced the victory driver in third spot. Al Hamily's victory teammate Sean Torrente also had an excellent yellow flag restart, passing Jonas Anderson to eventually move up to fifth. Carilla closed the tough race out with a start to finish win. Stark runner up, Shiap third, and victory drivers Al Hamili and Torrente completing the top five. That win took Carilla 16 points clear atop the world standings going into round five in Abu Dhabi, with Eric Stark in second place behind the Italian, three points up on Shiap in third, with Al Hamili on 30 points in fourth, and Celio slipping down to fifth. the 25th UIM F1 H2O Grand Prix to be raced in Abu Dhabi, a city considered one of the world's top marine motorsport destinations, and there were nine teams and 21 drivers ready to compete at the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi. The local team is the team to beat. Not only is Team Abu Dhabi the world team standings leaders, their top driver Alex Carella led the world championship going into round five, which would be his 50th Grand Prix start. The three-time consecutive world champion from Italy wants to win his fourth title in 2017 and he has an excellent record in home waters having won three Grand Prix here. With 16 points up on his nearest rival, a fourth Grand Prix win in Abu Dhabi would also mean a fourth world title for the Italian in 2017. Carilla's 
teammate Daniel Kamzi is a local hero, a multiple Grand Prix winner and former world number two who's always a contender in home waters. They also have a third driver, the talented up-and-coming youngster Rashid Al Kamzi. Led by 10-time world champion Guido Capellini, Team Abu Dhabi is one of the most formidable outfits in F1H2O. The surprise challenge this year has come from young former F2 legend Eric Stark of Team Sweden. After his pole and race win in Harbin and his runner-up finish in Liu Zhao, the Swede has found himself second only to Corella in the world standings going into Abu Dhabi. And a first world title is not out of the question in 2017. It will be difficult to win the race and stay in front of Alex. I'm trying to don't think so much about it, but like actually when it's coming closer and closer, I'm getting nervous. Like can't sleep on the nights and it's not so easy like this. It, this is Formula One and you have the chance to win it. You know, it's, it's nothing you can imagine. Stark's teammate, five-time Grand Prix winner and last year's world number four, Jonas Anderson, is also always a contender. Team Sweden have a third driver who makes his F1 H2O debut in Abu Dhabi, the F2 European champion, Eric Eden, who used to compete with Eric Stark on the F2 circuit. And then there's Philip Schiap, the three-time consecutive and defending world champion from CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team, who's looking to become just the second driver in F1 history to win four world championships in a row. He suffered various technical problems this year, but with just 19 points between him and Corella and two Grand Prix to go, anything is possible. Not uh, special pressure, it's uh, like a uh, normal race because uh, we have no choice. We do win and uh, we hope for a little problem for my uh, Abu Dhabi team uh, friend, but uh, okay, for us it's simple, we do win. Chiap races alongside another Frenchman, Peter Morin. Croc Baba Racing Team has seen a lot of ups and downs this year. Their star driver, two-time world champion Sami Selio of Finland, is a five-time pole winner and three-time Grand Prix champion in Abu Dhabi, but crashes and DNFs have wreaked havoc on his campaign in 2017, the Finn trailing in fifth place in the standings. He races alongside his talented fellow Finn, Philip Roms. Another local Emirati team is Victory Team of Dubai, perennial rivals of Abu Dhabi. They have two top-class drivers. Sean Torrente has been a year-end podium placer for three years running, while Ahmed al Hamali is back to his winning ways after his Grand Prix win in Liu Zhao last year and the third-place finish in Harbin this year. Also in the mix is another UAE-based outfit, Emirates Racing Team with former Grand Prix winner Maritz Stromoy and Mike Shimura, and the addition of a third driver, Matthew Palfreyman of the UK, the 2011 World F4S Champion, who will be driving a Jonathan Jones-built Dragon Hall in Abu Dhabi. The Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi circuit is a technical, flat, inshore course, nearly two kilometers long, with four left-handers and one right-hander. I mean, it's going to be a fast race course, but somewhere like that corner, the sun came direct uh, on the screen. So for me, it's a little bit complicated about the sun. The course, I think it's not tricky except the one corner close to Hilton, yeah? This year, we, the, the commissioner decided to modify this course. We have one pin there and it's very strong left-hander there. The event kicked off with high drama as teams took to the waters for official free practice ahead of the BRM qualifying. Team Abu Dhabi driver Daniel Kamzi blew his boat over early in the session, followed by his former teammate Ahmed Al Hamali of Victory Team. Al Hamali suffered only light damages, which weren't serious enough to exclude him from the race. Daniel Kamzi, on the other hand, pretty much totaled his boat, so he'd be racing the spare boat. Nothing, the boat blew over and uh, I crashed. Now we fix the, this boat, well, now we go inside the water, inshallah, we try my best to get it. In Q1, there were 19 drivers with Eric Eden and Cedric De Guin of Maverick F1 unable to start. There was a tight fight for a place in Q2 and... <laughs>
eventually young Team Abu Dhabi driver Rashid Al Kamzi edged out the experienced Portuguese veteran Duarte Benevente of F1 Atlantic team. But it was a shock exit for another Team Abu Dhabi driver, Tani Al Kamzi, finishing 15th in the team's reserve boat. Also unable to make it into Q2 were Maverick F1's Amari Jossom, Blaze Performance veteran Francesco Cantando, F1 Atlantic driver Grant Trask of Australia, Emirates Racing Team drivers Mike Shimura and Matthew Palfreyman. In Q2, the field was down to 12 boats, vying for a place in the top six for Q3. There was drama from the get-go as Sammy Celio rolled and crashed his boat. Q2 session was cutthroat with just one hundredth of a second between Moritz Stromoy and Sean Torrente in fifth and sixth place. It was a brave fight from Bartek Marsalek, but the Polish Blaze performance driver missed out on a Q3 spot by just five hundredths of a second behind Torrente. Al Hamili, Corella, Stark and Shiap all made it through at the expense of the likes of Jonas Anderson. BRM qualifying Q3, six boats, each with two laps apiece and the course all to themselves in which to set their fastest times in their bid for BRM pole position. First out was Sean Torrente, 43.28, very good, but will it be good enough? Listen, no matter where I end up, I'm really happy with everything, the way it ran, um, and my lap. My lap was perfect. It's the best lap I've probably ever run here, so hopefully it's enough. Emirates Racing Team's Moritz Stromoy was next out, and the Norwegian ace was flying out there. Two great runs. She thumps Torrente with an exquisite 42.89 lap. The former pole position winner takes provisional pole and sets a tough target for the remaining four drivers. 42.89 Next out was Ahmed Al Hamili. The victory team driver gave it all he had, but 43.53 was just not going to do it. Next out, Alex Corella, one of the most successful pole position performers of all time, with 14 pole position wins. He went out there all guns blazing, taking those turns tight, taking the fight to Stromoy. I can't do anything more now, so I just hope to uh, how I don't know how far we can get. If we're fourth, it's okay, but let's hope for a podium. Can he do it? 43.02, not good enough. Stromoy holds on to provisional pole as her former teammate Eric Stark takes to the water. But the Harbin pole position winner doesn't find the speed he needs, settling for a 43.47 lap time. That leaves just one man standing, Philip Schiap. The French three-time defending world champion takes to the water knowing he needs pole position to get his campaign back on track against Corella. He is fast, very fast. Moritz Stromoy watches on nervously, awaiting the outcome. 42.83, he does it by just six hundredths of a second. Philip Schiap has pole position going into the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi. We worked for, for this result. It's not easy because uh, Moritz is very, very fast. I'm a bit fast. Merritt Stromoy starts the race in second position. Corella takes third, Torrente fourth, Stark fifth, Alhamily sixth. Great win for Shiap, his fifth career pole position, and that's just what the Frenchman needed. Drivers are pumped, teams are ready for the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi. I don't know, let's see after the start what I can get from the start and uh, let's check out also the condition of the water. That will be big windy, so I have to be careful for sure and uh, let's take home the maximum point I can and uh, let's think that there is a, still a race for, for this championship. We can do it for sure and we are make a good result yesterday and now we are, we are ready for win the race. The penultimate race of the year, a maximum 40 points up for grabs here and in Sharjah as the countdown begins for the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi. The starting grid sees Shiap in pole with Moritz Stromoy to his right, Alex Carella third, Torrente in fourth, another title contender Stark in fifth, Al Hamili sixth, Rashid Al Kamzi seventh, Anderson eighth, Peter Morin up in ninth with Brahms tenth. <laughs> Oh. 
Alcomzi starts back in 13th. Eric Eden and Matthew Palfreyman were unable to make the race start due to technical problems. Both Corella and Shiup are going for a fourth world title, and Corella knows just how important this race is for his campaign. First light, second light, and they're off. The Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi is on. Shiap makes a great start, thundering down the starting straightaway to the commitment buoy. Bad start for Roms in 10th as he's left in Peter Marin's spray. Shiap keeps his nerve and gets to the commitment buoy ahead of Stromoy and Corella, who give chase to the Frenchman. Victory ace Sean Torrente right behind them in fourth as they round the first buoy and get into the circuit in hazy and slightly windy conditions on the start lap. The three-time defending world champion Philip Shiap wants to win here to keep his hopes for a fourth consecutive world title alive. Huge crash on race buoy number five. It's Cedric Deguin and Sammy Celio. The Mad Croc Baba team is despondent. What a terrible weekend for Celio. His boat is totaled. Cedric Deguin's boat is also too damaged for him to continue. I started uh, at the back side because, uh, because my trying yesterday was bad. And uh, Jonas I make a movement just b behind me. So I just moved the boat on the right. and. Sammy said you arrive at the right and take the boat and uh, I'm wrong. Look at the damage on Celio's boat, the hull in pieces and the cockpit is crushed, the windshield shattered. Here it is again on the replay from Mike Sumura's onboard camera. The two collide and there's spray everywhere. What a mess. So the race is on a yellow flag as drivers wait for the restart. There's the green flag. The race is back on in lap five of the 52 lap race. Shiap is on his toes at the restart while Corella makes a bold move on Moritz Stromoy in second, but Stromoy finds the speed on the outside to hold off the Corella challenge. No changes up top as the field moves on through, reduced now to 16 boats. Further back, Daniel Kamsi tries to move up the field from 12th position. The team Abu Dhabi driver at least trying to get in the top 10 to add points for the team and see if he can't get up higher in the succeeding laps as team Abu Dhabi manager Guido Capellini watches on. In the next lap, Sean Torrente in fourth place tries to make a move on his former teammate Corella, but the Italian ace holds off the challenge from the blue boat in an Abu Dhabi versus Victory Dubai dogfight. Corella with his eyes on the course, focused and concentrated in what is the most important race of the season for him so far. Behind them, it's Eric Stark in fifth, CTICF1 Shenzhen China driver Peter Morin up in sixth, then Jonas Anderson seventh, followed by Philip Roms in eighth, and Daniel Kamsi moving up into ninth. There's another boat out. It's the other Maverick F1 boat, Amari Jossam on lap nine. Maverick F1 team have no boats left in this race. With 19 points to close between him and Corella, Shiap knows it's do or die here in Abu Dhabi if he's to keep his hopes alive in Sharjah. He is driving with a mission in his best form all season since his win in the opening round in Portimao, Portugal. Moritz Stromoy is not letting Shiap run away from her. The Norwegian putting up a great challenge so far, sandwiched between two three-time world champions as she laps her own Emirates racing teammate number 51, Mike Shimura of Germany. Mike Shimura's luck runs out on lap 18, unable to follow up on a seventh place finish in Liu Zhao. On that same lap, Duarte Benevente of F1 Atlantic team is also out. There are no changes in the top six. Shiap still leading, chased by Stromoy, Corella in third, then Torrente, Stark, and Peter Morin. 13 time Grand Prix winner Francesco Cantando of Blaze Performance Team is also out of the race, reducing the field to a dozen boats on lap 17. In third place, Alex Corella is giving it all he's got to try and catch Moritz Stromoy. The Evian and Liu Zhao Grand Prix winner knows a second place finish would put in a very comfortable position going into the final race in Sharjah. Corella has to keep one eye behind him as Torrente keeps up the pressure on the Italian. Torrente famous for his comebacks and his aggressive style of driving. Despite finishing the last three years on the year-end podium and being in the running for the world title each of the last three seasons, Torrente has had a difficult 2017 with just one podium. <laughs> oh. 
finish at Evian, and his chances for a year-end podium this year are all but gone. Sean Torrente's teammate Ahmed Al Hamili, an Abu Dhabi native driving for the Dubai outfit, experiences trouble in the choppy circuit conditions as Torrente laps his fellow victory driver. A lackluster race so far for Al Hamili, who got two fourth place and one third place finish in the last three Grand Prix. Despite a nearly four-second gap behind the leader, Schiap, Stromoy keeps up her pursuit of the Frenchman in second place while holding off the Corella challenge behind her as the former Grand Prix champion and the only female driver on the tour continues to put in an exceptional race for Emirates Racing Team with 32 laps down and 20 laps to go in the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi. Philip Schiap is looking very comfortable nevertheless. He's driving consistently, carefully, and with utmost concentration in his quest to be just the second driver along with Guido Capellini to win four consecutive F1 H2O world titles. It's turning into a war of attrition as the three lead boats all push and prod to hold on to their precious positions while always looking for even the smallest opportunity to pass one another. The positions in the top six stay the same with Torrente fourth, Stark fifth, and Peter Morin on target for a best ever result in sixth. Further back, there's a three-way fight as Daniel Kamzi and Ahmed Al Hamili try to overhaul Philip Roms on that long bottom straightaway, but Roms holds on to eighth position. Daniel Kamzi keeps up the pressure though as he comes up from behind with Philip Roms to his right. The team Abu Dhabi driver finds the speed and enough clean water to overhaul Philip Roms, bumping the Mad Croc Baba racer down a spot. And that means more points for Team Abu Dhabi, the World Team Championship leaders. Just 15 laps left in the race, no change in the positions, although Murat Stromoy has cut the gap with Shiap down somewhat to under three seconds. Corella still in hot pursuit in third, Torrente fourth, then Stark in fifth. Eric Stark knows that a fifth place finish would not be enough for him if he's to keep his slim chances at a world title alive in 2017 after that incredible win in Harbin earlier in the year. Oh no, Peter Morin comes to a standstill with just two laps to go. Heartbreak for the Frenchman, who is on target for a best ever sixth place finish. And he drops back to ninth, but keeps going on in an effort to finish the race as he's lapped by his teammate Schiap. Philip Schiap heading past the final turns to the finish. What a race it's been for the Frenchman from pole to finish. A well-deserved win for him and CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team as Philip Schiap wins his ninth Grand Prix title at the 2017 Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi. Stromoy right behind him in runner-up spot. 20 crucial points for Schiap, but Corella comes in third for 12 critical points, and that means the Italian takes a handy 11-point lead going into the last race. I feel happy because uh, we, we worked hard after, after Avion, after China, and okay, the performance is, is come back, and I'm very happy for the team, and uh, the job is done for today. Chiap and his team celebrate another memorable and well-deserved win. Great result for Stromoy, who racks up 15 points as runner-up, 12 points worth their weight in gold for Corella. Torrente fourth, Stark now out of the title race with a fifth place finish. His Team Sweden teammate Anderson sixth. Daniel Kamzi finishes seventh after starting 13th. Great points for Team Abu Dhabi there. Roms eighth, Peter Morin still manages ninth. Grant Trask of Australia gets a point in 10th. Then Ahmed Al Hamili and Rashid Al Kamzi completing the list of 12 boats that finish the race. Tough, tough race, uh, water conditions since many times. I tried to take overtake Marit, but uh, she did a great job and uh, was too risky today to take a second position that was not making many difference for me. So we are leading then still more than 10 points. It will be difficult to start with Philip, but uh, I think uh, we can make it. Very good start from the platoon. In the middle of the race, it was a bit rough actually, so we had to back down a bit, but it was the same for everyone. <laughs> In the end, it 
was I'm very happy with the, with the result. The condition is very hard with the wind and the wave. It's not easy to finish a race in good condition. And uh, I make a safe race, I control, I manage, and I want to uh, finish first. And okay, the job is done. Now we do prepare Charger because uh, we have no choice. We do win Charger and maybe we have a little chance for the winter. Corella's third place finish sees him hold on to an 11 point lead atop the world standings going into Sharjah, which means a top 10 finish for the Italian would seal a fourth world title for him. Behind Schiap, Stark out of the running for a world title, but in very good position for a year end podium spot, 19 points up on Sami Celio in fourth. Ahmed Al Hamali in fifth, and Thani Al Kamzi sixth in the world standings going into the last round. In the world team standings, Team Abu Dhabi continues to dominate with 99 points. Team Sweden in second place on 66 points. CTIC F1 Shenzhen China third ahead of Victory fourth and Matt Krokbaba in fifth. That concludes a sensational Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi. See you in Sharjah with a 2017 UIM F1 H2O World Powerboat Championship will be decided. Wow, wow, wow.